Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Houston Zoo's Giraffe Barn. We'll be giving you guys a few minutes to get as many people logged on as we can before we start talking for sure, for real, about our animals. You can see we've got a couple taking up nice little close-ups right here. This pretty girl right in front of us is Camille. And Camille is a seven-year-old female giraffe who's decided she's now done being a star and walking away. And that's okay. And now we've got Gigi coming up close for her chance to be up close and personal with the camera and the Facebook audience. You saying hi, Gigi? Yeah, getting up close and personal. What do you think, silly girl? All right, so good morning and welcome to the Houston Zoo. My name's Kim, I'm one of the host stock keepers. I'll be talking about our giraffes for the next little while on this Facebook Live. We are hanging out inside the giraffe barn coming to you live on this nice rainy day. As you can see, like many of us, our five giraffes are all hanging out inside the barn at all because of the gross rainy weather outside. So we do have five giraffes in our herd. Uh, two are males and three are females. Up close right now, we've got Gigi and Joshua over here. Gigi's the one coming up for her close up right now. Uh, silly girl. And Joshua's off to the side, bending out of camera range, silly boy. In the doorway, we've got Bobby, looking out at the rain, and then Asali, who's our oldest female at 10 years old, looking on that side wall. Bobby is our youngest right now. He just turned two in September. So he still is the smallest of the giraffes, although he is catching up pretty quickly right now. But with him standing right next to her, you can see that there's still a few inches, a few feet in height he has yet to go before he gets to his full grown size. As we pan across, we can see his mom, Camille, is the one licking out the window. When you guys visit the zoo and come over to here to look at our giraffes inside the barn, oftentimes the giraffes will look back at you through that window because they enjoy it just as well. Now, as a reminder, we do have a fun Zubu after hours event taking place this Friday where the zoo is going to be open later than normal until 8.30 in the evening to help kick off the Halloween weekend. So our giraffes are all kind of hanging out in the doorway, looking towards the outside, debating if it's worth going out in that rain to get wet or not. And since they're hanging out far away, I might bring some brows over and see if they want to come over and close and we can show off some of their cool eating methods. So for anybody who's been to the zoo before and participated in our public feeding platform, we do hop for those public feedings twice a day at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. where the giraffes get to feed some lettuce. But here we're going to feed out some mulberry leaves. So we'll hold it out here and see if Gigi's going to reach out to grab it or just put her head even closer and steal it. So their tongue is up to 18 inches long and can be used to um, pull branches down even taller than they are or pluck a leaf off a branch. We'll see if Joshua will show off that long tongue and grab it. Joshua is now tall enough that he can reach almost as far back as the wall as the bar wall can be. He used to not be that tall, but now he is. Yeah, show off your tongue. There's your nice long tongue reaching out to grab that leaf branch and pulling it into your mouth. Almost like a hand grabbing that branch and pulling it nice and close all the way in. And you can, I'm not sure if the camera is good enough to see his teeth up close like that, but giraffes only have teeth at the front of their mouth at the very bottom. The top of the bar mouth is kind of a flat plate, but they've got molars further back where they can kind of crunch through all the stuff they eat. And we'll share with Gigi a little bit. If there are any questions out in Facebook world, please feel free to start asking them. And we'll go through some other fun factoids. Allie asks, why do they live with the ostriches? So they live with the birds for a couple different reasons. The first one being that ostriches and giraffes share similar habitats in the wild. Even in the savannas of Africa, it's really common to have ostriches and giraffes hanging out, commingling their flocks and their herds all together. And by having them live together, it allows us to have more animals for you guys to come see when you visit us here at the Houston Zoo and allows for a more interesting exhibit. Uh, the chance of coming by and seeing all five giraffes and both ostriches laying down at the same time taking a nap, it's pretty rare. It happens occasionally, but usually if you hang out for a few minutes, you'll get to see somebody, one of the animals walking around doing something uh, more interesting, interacting. Now we can see Joshua here using that tongue to pull off the last little bits of the leaf stalks and eventually maybe grabbing some of the bark off again as well. Liz is asking, why, do your, why does Gigi have a ridge between her eyes? So the giraffes all build up sort of this one um, knob kind of on the top of their head. I'll see if he'll pull his head where I can sort of 
point to it a little bit. This kind of knob right here, both male and female giraffes have that knob that forms. And then males, as they mature, build up calcium deposits, so their foreheads get very lumpy and bumpy. So right now, this is Joshua in front of us, and I'm not sure how good the camera definition is, but you can maybe see there are some little lumps and bumps forming on his head. He doesn't like his head being touched. You can see him kind of pointing from a few inches away. I don't want to scare him off. I know you can touch me, but I can't touch you. Those are the rules, huh, Joshua? And now he's walking away, but that happens. So the animals get to choose what they want to do. As you can see, we've lost a couple of them to the outside, but that's okay. They also know that it is getting close to 11 o'clock for that public feeding happening that they hope will be happening. It might get canceled because of the rain today, but it might have still happen. Tia is asking, how tall do the giraffes get? So male giraffes are usually somewhere between 15 to 17 feet tall. Joshua here right next to me is just over 16 feet. Uh, so he's, he's getting to be kind of right smack in the middle of where their height range can be. Female giraffes are usually a little bit shorter. They're usually between about 13 to 15 feet tall, uh, but they can be taller as well. So we have one female who's almost 16 feet. So she's a bit on the tall side for a girl, um, but she still is within range for a giraffe. I know you're eating all the bark off of this piece of mulberry, huh? Christine is asking, do the ossicones continue to grow? So the ossicones are these horn-like protrubens on the very top of their head. They are not quite a true horn. They stay covered in fur their whole lives, and they do eventually reach a stopping point as far as their length goes. Inside that ossicone is some bone that is fused to their skull. So if you ever see a giraffe skull, there is their solid bone running all the way up through those, those horns and those ossicones that are fully attached. Whereas a lot of other horned animals like cows or goats or antelope, the horn is made of a more of a keratin-based substance that's a fully, only an external thing. Oh, Joshua's coming in for his close-up right now. I know, what do you think about that camera, silly boy? So as a reminder, we are here at the Houston Zoo inside our giraffe barn uh, feeding our giraffes. Uh, Joshua just now was getting some mulberry leaves. Mulberry is one of the plants that grow pretty common here in Houston that's also good for the giraffes to eat. Uh, there are several other plants that they can get, but mulberry is definitely one of their favorites. They are strict herbivores. Here at the zoo, the bulk of their diet is alfalfa hay. They also get fed some of an herbivore grain and a variety of produce items, including carrots, yams, apples, romaine, and kale lettuce. And romaine lettuce is actually what we use at our public feeding platforms, which again, we offer typically twice a day at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. For those public feedings, the giraffes are the limiting factor. If they decide that they are full and done eating, that's when the platform has to end. Otherwise, it's typically open for an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. I'm gonna show off that nice long tongue again. No, oh, nope, you're gonna cheat and go for the one behind me. That's not fair. The camera can't see through me. I know, you're such a good boy. So hungry. Tia is asking, do giraffes defend and protect their babies in the wild? And they do. So giraffes main defensive weapon is to use their feet and to kick. And giraffes can kick forwards and backwards and actually do essentially kind of a roundhouse with their back legs. And they are pretty, pretty protective of their calves, but typically giraffe calves don't typically get too far away from mom. So they usually hang out pretty close to the herd. I know, you're such a good boy eating all those little mulberry stems, huh? Sarah is asking what a group of giraffes is called. So a group of giraffes is actually called a tower which is kind of a fun name because they are so, so tall, kind of like towers are. Um, so they've got a pretty, a pretty fun name for, for a grouping of giraffes. I know, you keep stealing this branch and pulling it almost out of my hands. So I do have a pretty strong grip, as you can maybe sort of tell as he's grabbing and biting off chunks of this branch. Uh, he definitely, if I were to let go, would pull this branch totally out of my hands as he raises it up like that. They do eat all of the branches of the branch as well. Cecilia is asking, are there any breeding recommendations? So giraffes are part of a species survival plan, otherwise known as an SSP, which basically means that there is somebody in the zoo community who plays matchmaker for the animals. They look at the entire captive population across the Canada, across the country. For giraffes, the SSP covers both the US and Canada. 
And they make recommendations based for, off of that. Um, so we keep a healthy population, genetically speaking, as far as recommendations go. And so they're due to have their next recommendations for the drafts coming out this fall. And so we will see what recommendations happen to us. Uh, with that, there's a pretty good chance that Bobby might get his own recommendation to move elsewhere because he is a two-year-old boy giraffe and currently is related to all three of the females that we have here at the Houston Zoo. Right now, our only males are Joshua and Bobby. Uh, Joshua is Bobby's dad, and he was born at the, Joshua was born at the Virginia Zoo. Marlon's asking if giraffes make any sounds. They do make some sounds, but most of the sounds they make are outside our range of hearing. So they make a lot of sounds that are quite a bit uh, lower than what people's ears are capable of hearing. They do make, do make one sound that's kind of like a chuff type sound almost that we can hear, but even that's pretty rare. We're coming back for another close up, Joshua. You're such a handsome man. <laughs> Jackie asks what their lifespan is. So while giraffes can live to be in their mid to late 20s, Late teens to early 20s is much more common. Kind of like how people can live to be over 100 years old, but 70s and 80s is much more common for us. And we'll grab some lettuce now to keep Joshua a bit more occupied, similar to what we would be feeding at the public feeding platforms. So they get some romaine and given the chance, he would eat this whole head of lettuce in about three or four bites. So we do individual leaves to help kind of slow him down. Otherwise, he would eat it super, super, super fast. Jude's asking, how fast can they run? They can reach speeds up to about 30 to 35 miles an hour. And that's true for both the giraffes and the ostriches who share their habitat with them here at the Houston Zoo. Most of the time, they kind of look like they're more ambling around the yard and moving pretty slow, but they can move quick when they want to. With their nice long legs, they've got a pretty, far, pretty good reach when they're running to reach pretty fast. They also kind of get their neck going do it the two, so their whole body sort of does that kind of a motion as they're running. Isn't that right, Joshua? I know, you're such a handsome boy. Joshua is an incredibly food-motivated animal, so he pretty much is always hungry and always willing to eat food, which is great for when we do awesome Facebook Live events, bringing our animals here at the zoo to you at home, as well as for our public feeding platforms and when we do behind-the-scenes tours as well. No, you're such a handsome boy. Sarah's asking, what is the oldest giraffe we have? So our oldest giraffe currently, her name is Asali, and she is a 10-year-old female giraffe, and she is the one in the doorway looking out towards the rain right now. At 10 years old, she is almost 16 feet tall, so she's a pretty big girl. She's a bit taller than the average female giraffe, and she weighs close to about 2,000 pounds. She's not quite as big as Joshua, who's here next to me. Joshua's just over 16 feet tall, and he weighs about 2,500 pounds. So they're both roughly the size of a small car when you come look at the consider their weights. I know, thank you. And Joshua's very much a big believer of he can touch you, but you can't touch him. So you may occasionally see him kind of reaching down and bumping my arm and my hand with his nose, but you won't ever see me actually reaching out to touch him because he's not a fan of it. Huh. Yeah, that's right. Allie's asking, do they eat any sweeter food? Um, the sweetest foods they really kind of eat are apples, uh, carrots, and sweet potatoes. They're not, they don't have huge sweet tooths. We've tried to offer them some, them some other types of fruits and vegetables, and they, for the most part, haven't really enjoyed most of the ones we've tried. So when we've tried things like watermelon and berries, they've not been fans. Uh, a couple of them like pumpkin, but not all of them. Um, what other sweet things have we tried? We used to have one that liked banana, but he moved to a different zoo and is no longer here, and the rest of them don't like bananas. We used to have some that liked peanut butter. None of our current ones like peanut butter. They do like honey for enrichment, so we'll sometimes give them little bits of honey. But for the most part, they don't have huge sweet tooths. Sweet teeth? Sweet tooths. I don't know what the right way to say that would be. I know, hello, thank you. Yeah, you're a handsome man. So, uh, my favorite thing about working with the giraffes are how sweet and delicate of eaters they can be. Um, as you can see, as we've been feeding them, they, they tend to be pretty delicate of 
eaters and for how big they are, that just sort of, I strike that as impressive, as well as their really, really pretty eyelashes. They're so pretty when you get up close to their eyes. They've got such long lashes and such big eyes. And they're just a pretty and sweet animal. And that's what I enjoy about working with them. Uh, so how old is Joshua? Joshua here is about seven years old. He was born at the Virginia Zoo and moved here when he was not quite two. So he's been here for a little bit over five years at this point. And he's currently our only uh, adult male giraffe. He's also the only giraffe we have at the Houston Zoo that was not born here at the Houston Zoo. The other four members of our giraffe herd all were born here. And Joshua moved here as part of that SSP breeding recommendation plan that we were talking about earlier in the Facebook Live. The other male giraffe we have is his son, Bobby, who is actually outside right now, whereas Bobby's mom, Camille, is the one looking out the window. Camille seems to be the giraffe that enjoys looking out the window the most. We've got a question about what their hair and fur feels like. And it feels sort of like a, um, if you've ever felt like the, the bottom's like a push broom, almost like that, but it's a bit softer. Uh, their, their mane, if they, were let them, if they allowed us to touch kind of the mane that goes down their neck, is a bit rougher of fur. Uh, but the, the fur on their face kind of feels fairly soft, but a little bit bristly as well. Liz is asking, how is their eyesight? Their eyesight is fantastic. On a clear day, they can see pretty close to almost a mile away. So they can see really, really well. They've also got pretty good hearing. You can see their ears are pretty much constantly always moving around, checking out all the sounds that they can hear all over the place. And because their eyesight is so good, a lot of other smaller animals kind of rely on giraffes to be the lookout. So if the entire giraffe herd all of a sudden starts running one direction, you better believe that all those smaller antelopes and bird species are also going to be moving that same direction just on the assumption that the giraffe saw something scary coming up behind them um, because they do have such good eyesight. We do thank you for joining us again today for this Facebook Live. Join us next week at Wednesday at 11 a.m. for our next Facebook Live event. Thank you so much and have a great day.